Y'all ball, bitches. It's Light Duty Assault Kit 2.0 Tokyo Drift. I made one version of this video in the past and it sucked, so here we are to rectify that. I use tools every day. I do plumbing, I do electrical, I do framing, shit, I even do drywall every once in a while, and sometimes I cook Chinese food. But these are not tools that are used to build stuff. They're not anything special. These are things that I recommend that everybody carries around because you can fix all sorts of shit with them inside a nifty little bag. Step one, get yourself a nifty little bag, and probably don't get yourself this one. I got this one because it's got like a carrying strap, but the thing when it's all loaded up weighs like 30 something pounds, it starts fucking up my back and it bounces all over the place and if I gotta squat or I gotta crawl up a ladder, the shit falls all out of it. But I've been too lazy to replace it. It also doesn't like to stand up. It likes to fall over and spill out all over the back seat of my truck. But when it's not doing all of those fucking problems, I can actually carry this shit around and carry stuff with my hands. Now in terms of building shit tools, I'm talking about powered saws, nail guns, you know, stuff that is, they're really big cumbersome tools with one giant purpose. These are tiny little portable tools with multi-purposes. Probably not gonna be any time soon that you're gonna be army crawling with me underneath the crawl space trying to fix a leaky shit pipe. You're not gonna be able to build a house or a jet engine with this shit, but if you wanna hang a TV on your wall, or you want to replace a toilet, or you know, you want to replace the alternator in your truck, you can do that with this. Now mind you, there's the right way, the wrong way, and the max power way of doing shit, and it is my constitutional right to say that religiously speaking, I am entitled to fixing everything the max power way. First up, this right here is a little baby adjustable wrench. It doesn't take up much space, you can get into tiny little places and you can undo bolts with it. Seven bucks is going in the bag. Now, these are the pliers I use. The other pliers that you might see, pliers like this belong in the trash, they're garbage. There's nothing that channel locks or needle nose pliers can't do a hundred times better than these fucking things. Anyway, these are channel locks. I've got the medium and the small set, you know, for grabbing onto shit, holding shit that's really hot, uh, pulling things. They're, they're fucking very multi-purpose. They can ratchet onto pipes pretty well. I love them. Make sure that when you get yourself a set, get, get the expensive set. Make sure that there's no nut and bolt attached to this thing because if there is, at the very last moment, when you're crawling in somewhere, that bolt's, bolt's gonna come loose. You're gonna miss it. Now you've got two fucking pieces of trash and still an unfixed problem. Here we goes. Screw my drivers. Been through a lot of screwdrivers. Here are the only two that you really fucking need. I call this one a sparky screwdriver because an electrician showed me these things and I threw out all the rest of my fucking screwdrivers for the most part. And let me show you what's cool about them. Hiding inside, we've got all these different size bits and also the holders are different size bolts so that it's got nut drivers and screwdrivers all hidden in the sun bit. If you've ever swapped out an outlet, a J box, some kind of electrical panel, what you're really missing is this square one bit. Square one bits fit into pretty much every brand new electrical receptacle and they are fucking so much better than these stupid Phillips head guys. So you know, sometimes I switch out all the outlets, light switches, all that shit in the house this square tip bit right here is awesome because you go at an outlet with a big spin of a chucher, you're gonna fucking absolutely strip everything to shit. You know, you crank on this guy and twist it a little bit, that square bit's gonna save your fucking life. Now I'm saving up to spend the extra five bucks on the one that also comes with some Torx heads in it, but uh, I haven't needed them thus far. This little guy though, it kicks a serious amount of ass as it is the same concept, just the itty bitty brother of it. And inside this guy, we've got all sorts of different size nuts and bolts, which are actually listed on the tip somewheres. But we've got all these different bits, but also we've got these star Securitorx. It's like a fucking diamond looking thing with a hole drilled in it. These are them bits that they use in public bathrooms to keep the graffiti artists from taking panels off the walls. But my favorite thing about Securitorx is that they work as Allen wrenches too. And they work regular Torx. So if you're getting Torx, always get Securitorx. It's three in one. 
So it's also got your, your tiny little screwdrivers for glasses and shit. So precision screwdriver set all packed into one thing. It doesn't come with some fucking box with a bunch of little fucking bits in it. Fuck that shit. There you go. These two screwdrivers will get you through just about fucking anything. Now, I have another set of these that's green that's on loan right now, but these are Makita bolt driver attachmentes, and it's a socket wrench set. But instead of it being a box where they all get jumbled up and you spend an hour and a half trying to find your fucking 10 millimeter socket, these are all stuck inside this plastic. Ask any auto mechanic out there how often they use, you know, their 17 millimeter head. You know, it's, 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 there's only a couple that you're going to be using most often. And this works for cars and machines. And then the green set that I have is for, you know, fence bolts and shit like that. I think you can get both sets of these for under, under fucking uh, 20 bucks for the, the both of them. And you can get the bigger set. Not only do they come with an attachment, a, which can stick right into your drill. They've got a little ball detent on them so that you can do this. And then you can get the thing in at an angle. And if this is too big to fit inside your engine bay, I keep a little cheap ass ratchety do for bolt shit. Ain't nothing special about this ratchet. In fact, I think I got it out of a baby socket wrench kit that I got at um, AutoZone like a million fucking years ago. But I took an entire pressure washer completely apart and put it back together with this thing. And I don't know, it's just got a nice rubber grip and it's it just comfortable in my hand. This is little 12 inch uh, pipe wrench and uh, really only reason I carry this is because I've been doing a lot of work on very old houses with galvanized water pipes and rerouting old gas lines and crap like that you shouldn't really need one of these things in a modern house what I recommend in lieu of that pipe wrench is this right here and I've bought probably about 12 sets of these things and they keep disappearing because they are so useful this is a pair of what I like to call super scissors. They cut through sheet metal. They cut through anything. Like they are just like a pair of like really awesome scissors. And who doesn't need a good pair of scissors? I mean, you're a person that fixes things. Get the fucking pair of scissors. I mean, they are so worth it. I legitimately give these to people that, you know, I need to give them a birthday present. I don't even know what to give them, but they're just this practical so that's why i recommend this pair of scissors and the reason why i don't have them in my bag is because somebody grabbed them and took off with pair number 12 again but since i do a lot of uh old to new conversion plumbing and i'm ripping out old uh pipes and shit like that it goes in the bag and plus it serves as my hammer beating the shit out of stuff with the back of it so multi-purpose it's heavy but it goes in the bag it's often paired up with this guy this is the milfucky demolition screw driver and um it's a screwdriver and uh, the newer versions don't have this useless little fucking thing on it which is fine but it's got metal that goes all the way through the fucking ass end of it if you spend any time around tools a flathead screwdriver is almost never used as a flathead screwdriver it is always a pry bar it's for digging crap it's for getting inside and prying shit apart and this is exactly what this fucking thing was designed for it's got this metal cap for bashing the absolute ass end of it with a hammer it's got little um square parts on here so you can grab onto this with a wrench jam it into something and then use your wrench to twist shit open and it's really strong you can use it as a baby pry bar they're fucking great 14 bucks for wiring up um itty bitty baby bullshit and i need something to stay still this is a pair of hemostatic climpity clamps which will hold something in place while i'm fucking with some shit very very fucking nifty when you need them very high precision too. No fucking weight, they go in the back. I used to be a huge fan of these guys, and you know what? They're still fucking pretty awesome. It's a pair of needle nose pliers, ka -ching, awesome, with wire cutters, awesome, with wire strippers, awesome. Also, these things, under 15 fucking dollars, they're fucking great. Only problem is, is if you're trying to get inside something and strip wires, now you've got this big dingus in that's fucking with you. So, that kind of sucks 
every once in a while, but I still recommend these things if you can't shell out the 35 schmeckles for a pair of these guys. So same concept, needle nose pliers. These are set in there so you can really get in there and strip some wires and some wire cutters, which will cut through things more than wires, but I don't recommend it because you'll get little burrs and it'll get sticky. But it also comes with one really interesting feature that I didn't know about till very recently. These two holes on the back, they're screw cutters for 832 and 632 TPI screws. So you can screw a machine screw into this thing that's that size, and then you can cut it. And then when you unscrew the screw, it'll still fit into a bolt. Instead of having some jagged, fucked up tumor on the end of it that you're never going to get to fucking work ever again if you fucking cut it with a pair of these. 832 and 632 TPI American Standard Thread Screws? That sounds oddly specific. I wonder what the fuck I need to know that for. Well, in the US and A, if um, you're working on electrical crap or anything or like the, the cabinet knob things, those are 832 screws. Every little screw that you find in an electrical box and a fan, uh, anything like that is almost always gonna be one of those two different flavors of screws. Get yourself a hat and two pairs of sunglasses. Cheap sunglasses work the best because they will get fucked up and broken. You wear any of this shit out in public and you will immediately scare anybody with a Twitter account because they'll be like, holy crap, I bet that motherfucker knows how to fish. Main difference is these have nothing underneath the eyeballs and these things do. And this in hot, foggy environments lets your glasses vent out, but it won't stop shit from bouncing up into your fucking eyes. These here will do that. Now I know these things aren't the super duper high tech polycarbonate safety glasses, but they are actually in fact fucking polycarbonate. And um, they're gonna stop a lot more shit from getting into your eyes than uh, just kind of doing the safety squint. Plus the sun's fucking bright. I live in Texas. Out here on certain days, the sun can kill you in seven hours. You'll be alive and then dead in seven hours under the right conditions. Ain't doing that squinting the whole fucking time getting a headache. Okay's other simple things, replaceable razor blade knife, a little fucking pocket flashlight, a little fucking marker pen. Great. This right here, I call it a chicken stick because it's for elect chickens. And also if you don't work on live electricity, you are a chicken. And uh, what you can do is you hit this button and you get it close to a live electrical circuit and it'll beep and scream and the light will turn red. So this way, you, if you're digging around in a live electrical panel because the asshole before you mislabeled the circuit breakers. And uh, it's a safety device, these things are pretty cheap. But I recommend that you get yourself one that also comes with a flashlight because if you're working on electricity and the power goes off, you're gonna be in the dark. Now the engine nerds on here say that it goes all the way down to 12 volts, but notice it's 12 volts AC. This shit does not work on DC power at all. So you can't use this on your car. You can't use this on a DC welding machine and try and figure out what's going on. If there's 200 volts DC running through whatever you're using for something and you pull this thing out and it doesn't fucking click, be very fucking careful. This is for um, residential and commercial electricity, and yeah, but 12 volts AC is not fucking dangerous to anything but microchips. I've got a much better meter in the truck. Um, this is a very crappy, crappy, tiny meter, but it will tell me if I plug the red and the black wire into something what I'm looking at. Um, 240 volts, that's typical. Uh, 120 volts, that's also another typical voltage. 24 volts is typical for low voltage. But the thing is, is if I plug this in to an outlet and I get some something squirrely, like it, it'll at least let me know that the voltages I'm testing are correct or incorrect, and that will help me deduce problems. It doesn't take up any space. It weighs like you could sneeze on it and fly off into the fucking atmosphere. So you know. Yeah. Then I got a roll of decent electrical tape. Um, don't use this as a primary method of keeping the ones and zeros from killing people. You know, I usually just do this where when I'm done wiring up an outlet, I, I run a couple uh, wraps around the, the screws that are sticking out. So when some kid goes around there and starts sticking, it's a one last layer of protection. This is Teflon tape. 
but this is the yellow Teflon tape and the yellow Teflon tape is more better because not only is it thicker, it is also rated for natural gas lines and potable water systems. If you're threading up water pipes or you're threading up gas lines, you're gonna need something else called pipe dope. Teflon tape works 80% of the time by itself, but for that extra 20%, you're gonna need pipe dope. And you wrap the tape on there and then schmoo this crap all over it and screw it in there and it dries up over time. That's the shit you really need. But you usually just keep this out there for anytime somebody brings a nail gun or a texture gun, any kind of air powered device, and it's just leaking air all over the place because you're like, I don't know what Teflon tape is. This right here is the Milfucky 12 volt impact my driver. And uh, this is not a drill, it's an impact driver. And what that means is there's a hammer spinning around in a circle inside this Thunderdome. When a drill can't twist no more, it just quits. This thing goes into overdrive and starts spinning this hammer and it's like bang, 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 and your bit goes chunk, 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 chunk. And that extra kinetic impact lets it remove bolts and all sorts of crap, especially rusty ones inside vehicles, this, that, and the other thing. It'll power big bolts through wood. Now, your typical contractor guys have this Milfucky version in the 18-volt version, which is insanely more powerful. But the reason I don't carry the 18-volt, this thing's lightweight. And if you got to climb up a two-story ladder, you know, carrying a nine-pound, 18-volt, ka-chunk, ka-chunk gun just to install your goddamn Christmas lights, no, it's not worth it. Now, if you're an aspiring homeowning Tim the Toolman Taylor and you go get one of the green Cryobi or shit, even a blue Cobalt one from Lowe's and you get the 18 volt version of one of these, yeah, it's totally fine. But you don't do this every day and I do. This 12 volty guy is a little on the pricey side for your average person. So it's a little bit, but it's a little bit overkill for what most people need and it's a little bit underkill for people that use a kachunk a chunk gun every five minutes of every waking out of their life but what this thing is is a perfect balance between a lightweight electric screwdriver and then something that will absolutely sink a seven inch fucking lag bolt into solid wood and also it'll even take rusty nuts and bolts off of tiny little things but it's not going to take the lug nuts off a truck this little doodad is about as expensive as the rest of this bag now if you have to pick one pick this but if you have to pick three pick this and this one twice another cool thing about these impact drivers is that one-handed you can remove your bits and the reason why i use the long ones is not only can you get it shit at weird angles you know and not strip out the screw that you're going at i also store them right here in this section of a purse and here I've got the, the Phillips head, a T25, which is a real brand new common star bit, a quarter inch, five sixteenths inch. This T25 bit, da da dun da dun, is for brand new decks and fences. People use this type of screw a lot, they're awesome. This is for everything else inside an American house, USA. This is a quarter inch bolt driver with a magnet on it, fucking awesome, for removing screws from crappy air conditioning systems. And this is a 5 16 which is good for removing nuts from um, nicer air conditioning systems, but also your appliances, you know, your washing machines, your dishwashers, gutters, they're all put in with these things. And another thing I like about these, they're dedicated bolt drivers, not bit holders. The bit holders will screw themselves out. Is that with one hand, you can cock lock and drop it in that then you can take a screw with the right size head you can slap it right on in there and then with one hand zip it into whatever the hell you want upside down downwards leftwards right fucking awesome and these are roofing screws i keep these in my screw suitcase which is another thing which shouldn't even be a video but this is a galvanized it's a zinc coated steel with epoxy coated over the zinc with a little rubber gasket washer Fucking, these things are fucking great because uh, one-handed in the dark. Next up, got a half inch twist drill, which is a specially made that'll fit inside an impact driver. Not all twist drill drill bits will fit inside an impact driver, 
but the Milwaukee Shockwave ones will. This one will set you back about 20 bucks. One of the first things everybody does is they go out and they buy a drill bit set with 9,000 slightly different size drill holes. And I gotta tell you, the amount of holes I don't drill would absolutely astound you. The only time you need a bunch of tiny little itty bitty drill bits of all shapes and sizes is if you're like literally making machines and you wanna make very specific size holes for very specific size screws. And even most machinists will tell you they only use like three or four of them motherfuckers anyway. So there you go, that's a light duty assault kit. Um, I would highly recommend you owning pretty much everything that's going on in here. You don't have to buy the expensive, mill fucky version of everything if you're not using it every other fucking day, you know?